So, finally, final measure that we're plotting and doing in the lab, eigenvector centrality. It's been so long since we went over these different particular measures. What is eigenvector centrality? That's the importance of people in terms of being connected to other highly connected people. Remember, the assumption, though, is that being connected to other highly connected people is actually important. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. In this case, I'd actually give it that that might be true, that being connected to other important people might be helpful. But I don't expect actually a tremendous amount of variation in this case because um, this is a relatively new network. And it's not one that's being structured by institutional forces or other things where there's gatekeeping processes or things like that. But who knows? I've been wrong before in this video, so I might be wrong again. And it's okay. I'll just learn something new about this network. So I'm just doing this. I already have these data objects. I'm going to run this. I'm going to look at eigenvector. And you, okay, so here, this is a little bit different because we are calculating eigenvalues. Eigenvalues are um, a manipulation you can do with matrices. I actually have a reference to Wasserman and Faust if you want to go through actually how eigenvalues are calculated. Um, we're not going to do that right now. Essentially what uh, iGraph is having to do is assign, assign an eigengraph score and it's showing you the logic of how it was done. So there are more columns in this data set than in the other ones. But let's look if there's any variation whatsoever because it's the game we play. The bottom is zero and the top is a value of one. We ha do have variation. We do have people that are very highly connected to other connected people in this world. So let's look at when we move this into a network. I'm not going to see what we've got. Okay, let's go look. Go zoom it. All right. Eh, is that really it? Let's check that again because it seemed. Uh, government, I got this rally. I just really want to see the graph actually change because that looked a little bit like the betweenness graph. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's go look at that. Okay. It really is the real deal. All right. So uh, we have a little bit more variation in eigenvector centrality. We do have some highly central people. They don't look like the same people as the betweenness. We have two what appear to be grad students that have high eigenvector centrality, and then we have one uh, researcher that appears to have eigenvector centrality. We have sort of three all-stars, and then we have some variation between. What would I think about this as a network measure? I would look at the I people eigenvector centrality. I would first see if they line up um, in an additional analysis with degree centrality. So I look at in-degree, out-degree centrality, and eigenvector centrality. If the people are different uh, in the eigenvector centrality list and they're not completely overlapping, then those people are uniquely interesting people and in that they may be connecting important people who otherwise aren't connected. Now that also might be, you can look and compare it to between the centrality as well, but they may be slightly different information. Because between the centrality, remember, is the number of shortest paths. It might be that um, the, 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 with people with high eigenvector centrality aren't necessarily uh, on the super freeways of the network, but they're close enough to some central people uh, that they matter and they're important. In influence networks where you're trying to influence highly central actors, it's good to get a sense of who is really visibly connected and then who might be important people behind the scenes. And eigenvector centrality actually can be one of those things to get a sense of just beyond like the global sort of, uh, degree connectedness, who are some potentially important back channel players. All right, so this concludes the um, lab as far as the basic topics, uh, position, con uh, connectivity and positional measures. 
I want to do one more last kind of fun thing because I'm here. And it's a segue to more advanced network topics. And that is clustering. And because we, I've actually introduced clustering coefficient now, I want to see if uh, that clustering coefficient is, uh, if it's high or higher, which means that, you know, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, something, so, something higher than that. I mean, this, this, the, there isn't a ton of clustering in this particular network, so this is somewhat of a pedagogical exercise. But um, if you are seeing clustering values that suggest that there's some structure, you know, why not run a community detection algorithm? You know, let R do some work for you and get a sense of there are there really distinct communities are, that are informing um, the discussion networks. Those could be communities that are bottlenecks of information. Um, they might be just a reflection of underlying relationships before they ever got there. But in either sense, they can give you some more information. So I'm going to do a clustering algorithm that is a Newman, a Gerben Newman algorithm. This is uh, connected to the idea of betweenness, but this time instead of saying the node that's on the shortest number of paths, it's looking at the edge. <laughs> it's basically flipping it and saying, well, what is the edge that uh, connects the most amount of people? And it runs through that. Then it says, okay, when you remove those edges, what are the people that are left? What's the next, what's the next highest between this edge? Okay, then they remove that. And basically, you go down until you have no more edges. And from that, you can get a sense of uh, what are the groups of people that have more connections to themselves than have connections to the rest of the network by doing this iterative decomposition of the network. Uh, I would say in general, when you have more nodes in the network, this is one way to deal with um, when you're beginning to have to summarize information in a network because now the network is becoming so large and unwieldy. So we run. It says, oh, there's a warning. Divergent colors. It's red. It's scary. It just means that there are lots of little communities. Maximally, <laughs> If you, if you can have um, on one extreme, one community where there is, there, everyone's equally connected to everyone else. It would look like a baseball, the inside of a baseball, all that connection, right? The other extreme is that everybody's a community, a community of individuals, meaning nobody's connected to anyone. This says that there were 43 divergent colors. There's 200 people. Uh, I can run some additional analysis to see what are the larger communities. So what I expect is that there's uh, two or three communities that are larger, and then they get uh, a scattering of communities that consist of two or three people. Let's visualize this. I actually have. I just need to make it big. And yeah, so we have the size isn't going to tell me the story, right? It's coloring. So no, something interesting. We had this eigenvector centrality score. And the people in our eigenvector centrality that were the biggest in eigenvector, they're not in the same community. They're in different communities. So that's interesting. Actually, what's run between us now? You know, I feel like, hey. Let's, and let's, let us run this. I want to size it by between us really quick because I can. And see if they're in different communities there. So let's just do that really quick. And see if it's the same or it's different. Well, okay. I don't actually need to plot. Well, I'll plot it and then I'll plot it and whatever. Oh, wait. One. Okay, and let's go down. I've done that before, but now let's do it. Let's do the Newman analysis quickly. Okay. Oh, it's different. Okay, so now in between this, we have one high between this person that's in the brown community. We have two other people that are that are have high between us in this brown community, and then the other two between us are in different communities. By the way, if I want to look at just the sort of sense of the communities, I should scale this back because right now I have these sort of glowing big nodes 
that are, that are maybe distracting the story and I might want to make the size of the nodes more even. But what I do know right now is that we have, even with this initial community clustering analysis, we have different communities of people potentially, and we want to do other analyses and do comparisons and things like that. But different communities of people that are not bridged. And so we can make, can maybe potentially make connections between those communities um, if we want to make this a stronger discussion network.